Hello and welcome to Stories That Shape Us. My name is Joanna Daniel. Thank you for joining me in Stories That Shape Us and for your comments and your feedback. I want to use this opportunity before I go into today's content of abuse in dating relationships to invite you to our Come See a Man event in Swansea. It's our annual emotional healing conference and we have things for the entire family. We have sessions for in people are around abuse, uh, sorry, anxiety and depression. We have seminars on healthy relationships. This whole week we've been dealing with unhealthy relationship and some of the impact of that on us. And we know that that happens quite a lot. And we have men and mental health. And we have a physiotherapist that's going to talk about just the impact of carrying all this pain in our bodies and what it does to our bodies. There's an amazing quote that I love that says, the body sympathizes with the mind and the mind with the body. That means toxic stress. When something is happening like abuse, it doesn't just impact our mind. It's not just something that we need to, we can think our way out of, or if we fix our thinking, then we're going to be okay. It really affects our bodies. It, it affects us physiologically. And so stress can cause inflammation. It damages or it, it results in things like diabetes and compromise our immune, our immune system. And there's so many other ways where stress can harm us. So I want to invite you to this amazing emotional healing conference. Sponsor somebody if you're a church listening. Sponsor people who you know is in your church that is struggling, that is in need of this level of support. Sponsor somebody. Send somebody. Don't just send your wives, men. Come along. Bring your entire family so that we're healing the entire family and we're breaking cycles and creating new patterns for the next generation. I hope I'll see you there. So with that said, I'm going into today's story, which is abuse in dating relationships. Now, this should not happen, but it does. And because it does, I want you to be aware of how it happens. So if you are in a relationship that is abusive, that has these tactics, that it has these features, then you can know it for what it is. And sis, or rather, run. <laughs> it's just like, don't pray, don't fast escape because if it's happening in the dating relationship it's going to happen in the marriage and it's not going to change i know when we're in love and there's endorphins and and all the happy is that the name of the happy hormone you know when all of that is happening it the feel good feelings it's very difficult to make those decisions and so that's why it, it need, it's important to take time out to step away come to the conference to do it to take a deep breath, to spend some time alone so you can hear yourself and you can connect with what you think and how you feel and you can name it what it is and so that you can leave. I know people lie to us, right? And they tell us that. If we're not married, at a, married rather at a certain age, then something is wrong with us. They, society will make you believe that something is wrong. There might be those well-meaning church mothers that is asking you, why are you not married yet? There might be those aunties that is pressuring you that, well, how come you're not married? And look at so-and-so and so-and-so. And, so and you might feel extreme pressure to get married because somehow it's going to fulfill your life or make you into an elevated human. You're, you are okay just as you are. And I know those pressures are can be enormous, right? I understand. But believe me, You'd rather be alone than be in a relationship that is unhealthy and abusive. So let's talk about what, what that looks like. What does it look like? What are some of the things that happens in relationships that is, that is a dating relationship that is harmful and abusive? The same things will happen in the marriage, in an abusive marriage. The same manipulation, the same control, hitting. I, you know, I know that their, their boyfriends that hit, their girlfriend that hit, if he hits you, if they hit you when you're dating, they're going to hit you when you're married. So you might say, don't hit me again. And if you do, I won't marry you. They might stop. But I tell you what will happen when you, when you get married, they'll start again. Maybe the day you get married, they might start again. Because now you're here. Because you might not believe in divorce. Because your culture might not support divorce. Because your church might not support divorce. So now they know that they have you right in their grasp and they can feel now I can do whatever I want to do with you. If they hit you when you're dating, they're going to hit you 
when they're married. Anybody who raises a hand to you while they're dating, hit you, push you, pretend to choke you, hit the wall where you're sitting, break the furniture, kick the car, smash your window, and a whole host of other things that happens in dating relationships. If that is happening while you're dating, it will happen when you're married. If they tag you, if they tap into your phones, if they do those things when you're dating, they will do it when you're married. If they're jealous and it's unhealthy, if their jealousy extends to the place where you can't say hello to anybody and nobody can say hello to you, if you are blamed for somebody looking at you because you can't control where people look, if you're blamed for somebody looking at you, if the jealousy is, any form of jealousy is not, is not healthy for any relationship. Not, it, it's not always abusive, but when it gets to the place where you are held responsible, where you are punished through silence, through withdrawal, through um, name calling, through uh, insults, when it, when it gets to that place, it's abuse right? Um, it's not love, friend, beloved. It's not love. It's not, they're not doing it because they love you and don't want to lose you. They're doing it because they're an abuser. That's why they're doing it. Not because they love you and don't want to lose you. This person is abusive emotionally, physically, and they will continue to do that. You might be used to being gaslighted. So you might, one of the things you mustn't do is show them this video because you'll go say, look at what Joanna said. And they'll, they'll, they'll do, listen to it, but I'll tell you what they'll do after. They'll gaslight you. They'll try to discredit me and the information. They'll try to discredit you for even listening to it. Why would you listen to something like that? How could you not trust me? I can't believe you believe this about me. And they will twist it really quickly and project onto you and make it about you and how such a bad girlfriend, that but boyfriend that you are, that you would even, and you know that they're going through a hard time right now, suggest something like this to them. You know, wives, if you're listening and you're in an abusive marriage, if you recognize it, they'll say the same thing, right? It will be projected onto you. It'd be like your fault that they do this. Well, if you were faithful, I wouldn't have to be this. If you didn't smile at that brother in church last week, or if you didn't let this one hug you too close, or whatever it is that they would have made up in their minds that you've done, then it would be your fault. And so you will show them this video and, and they will leave. You won't leave with any sense of satisfaction that it's understood that finally you have a name for the things that you've gone through and you want them to be able to understand that there's a name. This is what it is. You need to change or we can't get married. So here are some things also to consider not doing. And I know that this is challenging because again, the pressures of society around being married, you might feel like, you've committed yourself in certain ways in the relationship. They may have pressured you into having sex in the relationship, and now you feel indebted, connected, um, shamed. You might feel like you have to. You don't have to do anything, right? But you might feel those ways because they might be using it against you. They might say you're damaged. You're not good enough now. Nobody will want you. I'm the only one, you might as well, all of those things. And you might be reasoning it out and said, you know, I've been with him maybe for two years, one year, 18 months, whatever, five years. We're having this sexual relationship. I might as well. Don't do it because you're going to be miserable because you deserve a loving, caring relationship. Th this that has been going on will be affecting your self-esteem. And you might feel like, you are not a good Christian. God won't want anything to do with you. That is not true. We know that he loves you with an everlasting love and with loving kindness, he draws you. He will never call you names. He will never judge you. And he's the only one that can. 
But we know that he says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You might even be blamed for the sexual relationship. It's not your fault because it takes two, doesn't it? So here's something that you, meet, you need to look out for. You might want to fix it. As women, sometimes we want to fix it. You might want to fix it. You might feel maybe if we speak to their parents, maybe if we speak to this auntie, this uncle that knows about our relationship, maybe we should get counseling together. Don't get counseling together. You're going to come out of that relationship, a counseling relationship, more damaged. Because this person is so skilled at manipulating and gaslighting and projecting that before you leave that space, everything will be your fault. And that's why we don't encourage counseling, whether you're married or not, for people when there's abuse happening. And that's why I spend so much time on it, because I know that there's a large percentage of our sisters in our Christian community that is in abusive relationships and want to use these measures that we know and work really well to fix it, like talking to the pastor, talking to the elder, um, counseling. But we know that in when there's abuse, that these methods don't work. You have to do it on your own. They do it on their own. Separate accountability, all of that kind of stuff. That's the only thing that works. So do not pray. I'm not saying don't pray for them. I'm saying pray, do not pray for the relationship because prayer won't fix the problems that are there. And they're not relationship problems. So you might be gaslighted into believing that they're relationship problems. And it's because you do these things. That's why this is happening. But they're not. This is individual problem. And prayer won't fix it unless the perpetrator is willing to change. That's the only time prayer works. God gives us freedom of choice and he won't ever take it away from us. That's his government. We, that's his government. That's a part of his character. Freedom to choose and to do what we want to do. Um, do not reason it out. I know sometimes when we're in this grooming process and this abuse cycle, there are periods of calm where there are flowers and there's gifts and there's lots of promises. But if you know this person really well, you'll know that that period of calm don't last long. In this time, you might choose to reason it out and to say, oh, well, maybe they're changing. Change needs to be consistent. And like I always say, trust the pattern. Trust the pattern. If the pattern is they do this, they come to a place of calm where there's nice words and promises and gifts and and trips and all of that, just know that it's going to go back into the tension building phase in a couple of days or hours, right? And so the cycle is going to continue again. Trust the pattern. If the pattern is telling you that this is, this is characteristically what the person does, then trust those patterns. Do not talk to your friends, especially your friends who will who also wanted to get married. They might be well-meaning people, but when they don't understand abuse, they might reason it out. Here is the option that you have run. You need to get as far away and fast as possible with some good firm boundaries around you, with some people who can support you. If the relationship is abusive when you're not married, uh, in, even if it's emotional, financial, sexual, uh, physical, the, the list of abuse, spiritual, it is going to be continue, it's going to continue to be so when you're married. And you deserve the best. You deserve somebody who can love you, somebody who can understand and win your heart consistently, and somebody who can nurture and protect your heart and not harm it. Remember, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Stories That Shape Us. I hope you'll join me on the next story.